Ah, oh, man, all this stubble's just accumulating up. Uh, look, I had a headache, okay? So, you know, I, I couldn't shave, and I just got sidetracked uh, dealing with everything. And my headache that I just mentioned is probably going to get worse, because now... Uh, we're gonna watch this edify video now the name Ryan T Anderson might be unfamiliar to some of you who uh, have recently gotten involved in politics but earlier last decade when gay marriage was the you know common discourse um, in terms of socially related politics this guy was everywhere uh, he was with the Heritage Foundation constantly, constantly, you know, just advocating against gay marriage, and he is basically the epitome of evil, and the epitome of everything that is the opposite of objective good. <laughs> look, look at this fucking guy. Do you trust him? I don't think I do. I can tell I don't trust him just by looking at him, and knowing the fact that, you know, he has just been pure evil throughout the entirety of his career as an advocate of conservative values. But today, we're going to learn about the transgender threat. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, those trans people. They're a problem. <laughs> How? Well, I guess they'll just have to explain it. But it seems as if they're an existential threat to humanity. I don't know. So... Let's give this a watch. Hold on. I'm gonna give you the opportunity to click off this now, uh, so you don't lose brain cells. It's fucking crazy. Ah, yes. There is a transgender Bootleg Prager you. The is not from people who identify as transgender. The threat, the threat is from you. That is true people who identify as transgender. And Wrong. And society as a whole. They always, always talk about society. Oh, this is the collapse of Western civilization, and if queer people get married, everything's gonna fucking fall apart. <laughs> and then it never happens. Like, whatever happens? How do any of you get affected by this, assuming you're not queer? Knowing how much conservatives project about issues like this. <laughs> Let's continue. The threat is coming from activists pushing a transgender ideology who reinvent language. Transgender ideology. Tear down medical. Well, language is arbitrary. Safeguards and push their ideology on children. Good. For uh, so long as children know transgender people exist, I do not see the problem. Let's understand some of the basics in their own words. According to a recent publication. Oh, yeah, I definitely trust you to steal land our positions. By the American Psychological Association. Quote, transgender is an umbrella term for persons whose gender identity, gender expression, or behavior does not conform to that typically associated with the sex to which they were assigned at birth. Note that phrase, assigned at birth. According to trans activists, biological sex is not real. The sex. Nobody denies the validity of biological sex. As a matter of fact, transgender activists constantly do acknowledge the delineation between gender and sex. However, in common parlance, when are somebody's chromosomes going to be relevant? When are the gametes somebody produces going to be relevant? Like, do you legitimately need to know somebody's chromosomal makeup just to give them pronouns and just respect their gender identity? Yeah, as a matter of fact, until we do a 23andMe on Ryan T. Anderson, I'm just gonna call them a they-them. Because, you know, I don't know their chromosomal makeup. They could be lying about the sex they were assigned at birth. You know. God damn it identifies with is that person's sex, regardless of his or her innate physical characteristics. In other words, a man who identifies as a woman is a woman and always was a woman. This is objectively true. Modern science shows that our sex manifests itself in every level of our being, from the obvious physical differences between men and women to our internal organs and the way our bodies are structured, and continuing all the way down to our DNA. Men Typically, for people with complete androgen and sensitivity syndrome, they are male, and phenotypically, they look like cis women because of their insensitivity to androgens and uh, testosterone and typically what are male hormones so the fact that those people are male but look and so long as they are socialized into a certain gender behave as they do i don't think you would have a problem calling that person who is male she her men and women are different from the moment of conception 
Cosmetic surgery and cross-sex hormones can affect appearances, but they cannot change the underlying biological reality. And how is the biological reality, whatever the fuck that means, relevant to conferring somebody pronouns? Like, do you legitimately need to know what gamete somebody produces? To call them by she, her, or, you know, just respect their gender identity? Why do we call people their names, or by miss or missus? Like, do you legitimately need to see a marriage certificate to call somebody missus? Do you need to see somebody's birth certificate to call them by their name? No, you just address them by who they want to be addressed by. Address them as the name they wish, because that fundamentally respects their identity as a human being. Some trans activists try to muddy the waters by pointing to certain extremely rare disorders of sexual development. But mm -hmm. just because a person has a developmental disorder that makes it harder to be readily categorized as either male or female does not mean that person is neither male nor female. He's doing it. He's legitimately thinking about chromosomally testing people to confer them pronouns. Like, this idea of cheek swapping somebody then looking at their fucking cells under a microscope just to give them pronouns, it's entirely a superfluous idea. Like, had you not known somebody was trans, you probably wouldn't be referring to them as the pronoun that is correlative with the sex they were assigned at birth. I mean, like this whole chromosomal thing is just an ad hoc way of excluding trans people. What does philosophy say? We don't have to read Genesis to understand that God created us male and female. We love no, Genesis. <laughs> The Bronze Age, well, technically, a uh, Iron Age, fable that says a talking snake set things in motion. Wonderful. Brilliant. There is a difference between identity and reality. Just because someone identifies as something... Identity is reality. ...doesn't necessarily mean he or she is that thing. Gender is entirely an arbitrary category, and there's nothing completely defining it. And if you were to say gender is chromosomal sex, you don't see anybody's chromosomal sex. You do not know until you have completely, 100% verified that they are of a certain chromosomal set. But when you are talking to someone, in common parlance, what is the relevance of that? Unless you're like some sort of doctor treating some trans person. I identify as a Baltimore Orioles fan, therefore I am one. Yeah, there's nothing rigorously defining what a Baltimore Orioles fan is, so yeah, sure. But if I identified myself as an 80-year-old woman, simply claiming that would not make me an 80-year-old woman. If you identify it as woman, yeah, womanhood is a fundamentally arbitrary category, however, age is an empiric. You need to be able to delineate between things and not strawman us constantly. What about the medical and psychological field? Medical and psychological- let's look this up. Science. The APA says gender is a social construct and a social identity. Um, that seems to align with my perspective now, doesn't it? Gender dysphoria is a real condition that can cause tremendous pain and suffering. Sorry. And not all trans people have gender dysphoria, but okay. We should become passionate towards people with gender dysphoria. The treatment for gender dysphoria is medical transitioning. But so-called sex reassignment is impossible because sex isn't assigned to begin with. By sex reassignment, people do not mean replacing chromosomes. They typically mean bottom surgery, you know, surgery on the chest, and whatever cosmetic adaptations they want performed on themselves. And there is no medical evidence that transitioning from one sex to another actually resolves that pain and suffering. In there fact, absolutely is. So here's this article by Cornell entitled, What does the scholarly research say about the effect of gender transition on transgender well-being. And the bottom line was, this search found robust international census in the peer-reviewed literature that gender transition, including medical treatments such as hormone therapy and surgeries, improves the overall well-being of transgender individuals. The literature also indicates that greater availability of medical and social support for gender transition contributes to better quality of life for those who identify as transgender. I cite my source. Now, if you have conflicting findings, I humbly implore you to cite yours, Mr. Anderson. Uh, and by sources, I don't mean your own article on Heritage's blog. Thank you. There is a lot of evidence that transgender treatments actually cause further harm. Citation needed. In 2016, the Obama administration concluded that after a review of the best studies, that there were no clinically significant improvements in the quality of life of people who underwent gender reassignment surgery. Citation needed. 
Do you have them in the description? Uh, doesn't seem like it. So I'm gonna assume that this is a crock of shit. The most thorough long-term study of people who underwent gender reassignment surgery was done in Sweden over the course of 30 years. It found that people who underwent gender reassignment surgery had a suicide rate 20 times higher than their peers. Citation just needed. Last year, using the largest data set ever, revealed that neither hormonal nor surgical transition brought any benefit to patients. Finally, Citation the best needed. indicate that when children with gender dysphoria are given time and space to deal with their internal conflicts without puberty blockers or cross-sex hormones, between 80 and 95% of them will naturally embrace their bodily sex. So how does all Citation this needed. What is the threat to society? First, trans activists push their ideology at the expense of girls and women. They demand laws that they are girls and women. Allow men who identify as women to enter female-only spaces, like women's bathrooms, locker rooms, and even prisons. This poses a safety and privacy risk to our mothers, sisters, wives, daughters, and granddaughters. That is objectively untrue. There is no empirical evidence showing that the acceptance of transgender identity is a threat to cisgendered people in any fashion whatsoever. This is not borne out empirically whatsoever. Males are also being allowed in many states to compete in female sports. Males have inherent differences in their bodily structures, which no surgery or hormone can change, which give them tremendous athletic advantages. Cis women have tremendous athletic advantages over other cis women. Like, I don't get the point here. Second, people are being forced to speak and act in support of trans ideology. There Good. There are increasing examples of people being fired from their jobs for not addressing a person by that person's preferred pronouns. Good. Or shamed for not specifying their own pronouns. Most importantly, transgender people. I think you should, be, you know, don't coerce people into uh, expressly stating their own pronouns. But if you refuse to acknowledge somebody's gender identity, I think that's kind of a dick move. Like, would you address somebody by their name or by their honorific? Well, if you didn't, that'd be a dick move, wouldn't it? Marketed to young children. An example. Examples like the genderbred person or drag queen story hours, these messages confuse children, and the intense push for transgender ideology over the last several years has led to a rapid increase of teenage girls identifying as transgender. Good. Also, that, you know, pushing it on kids thing, zero evidence of that whatsoever. Zero evidence. For children to be healthy, they need help from adults to accept their physical bodies and understand themselves as male or female. People who identify as transgender deserve our love and compassion. And that is exactly why we must speak the truth in love. Biology is not bigotry. I'm Ryan Anderson. You don't know somebody's biology when you see them. Not only are there people with CAIS that I mentioned earlier, but there are also cisgender-looking trans people that unless you tested a DNA sample of them, you would not know their biological makeup. This whole bullshit biological thing is again an ad hoc way of excluding transgender people from being addressed by their preferred gender. Author and president of the Ethics and Public Policy Center for Edify. Ethics and Public Policy Center for Edify. It's essentially bootleg Prager you, but um, let's read some of the comments here. Let's read some of the comments. Wow, it sure is great that they put all of those 100% true and reliable sources in the description. <laughs> uh, as a trans person myself, I agree that there's both negatives and positives, but that this is a threat either way doesn't sit right with me. I never denied the fact that I just felt I was born into the wrong body and that needed to change for me to feel more with peace with myself, as well as living through living on throughout my life. It's not a threat. This video confused me and maybe me think that it was more so speaking on the negative impacts it can have rather than the positives. Just to say it can be threatening was really rubs me the wrong way. <laughs> Look, it's what Sean Last does, okay? They just make up bullshit. They'll make up bullshit and not cite it and you can just see straight through this horse shit. It's just not real at all. What is real is the delineation between gender and sex. You just have to say that reading these comments is comforting. Trans people are putting up with less and I love to see it. It was just myself, but I just want to say that I love you all and will do anything I can to fight along with you. LGB, keep the tea. Wonderful, based, excellent. People who identify as transgender deserve our love and compassion. The entire rest of the contents of the video, I beg to differ. They have no principles whatsoever. There's no hate like Christian love and they're entirely hypocritical in their principles. I love how he sets up his arguments on completely false facts, quote unquote. No one has said that biological sex is not real, only that our binary understanding of sex 
this or that, one or the other, only two options, and it's all based on genitals, is literally not scientifically accurate. <laughs> <laughs> it's not scientifically accurate at all. And this, like, genital preposition that these fucking transphobes are proposing, that we abide by, like... Do you legitimately have to see somebody's genitals to confer them pronouns? That's disgusting. That doesn't make you somebody rational. That makes you a creep. Fucking disgusting. I love when they show the evidence. I'm glad they linked all of these studies in the description. Yeah, Ryan T. Anderson is full of shit, and so is the rest of conservatism. That's the video for today. Thank you.